What's up guys, Cloud of Truth here with some more Battlefield 3 and today I'm going to be doing a little bit different video than I usually do. I'm not sure if I want to turn this into a series or not, but I definitely want to discuss it in today's video and that is talking about really lost weapons, I guess you could call it, of Battlefield 3. Weapons that you hardly ever see, no one uses, and really the reason for behind that, whether or not the weapon is really that bad to have no one use it or if it's a, actually a decent weapon that people are just overlooking. And the first gun I want to talk about today is the QBZ 95B in the Engineer class. And this weapon, for me, is by far the least used weapon in Battlefield 3. I cannot remember the last time I was killed by this gun. It's probably been like two months almost. I mean, it's been almost that long probably since I've been killed by this gun. I just never see anyone using it. And it's... For me, it's kind of one of those things where I can understand it, but at the same time, I fail to really see why this gun is so uncommonly used. It's actually a decent gun, but there are a few f downsides and flaws to it that uh, that really, I guess, turn off people to this weapon. But it does have one great thing, and watch this shot right here. Look at that right there. That is the one thing I think the QBZ does extremely well for being a weapon in the engineer class, is that this gun hit fire so well it is almost up there with guns like the mp7 and the p90 when it comes to hit fire accuracy however those two weapons are probably a little bit more accurate than the qbz but this weapon is definitely an a plus when it comes to hit firing this weapon can hit fire guys almost all the way across the map in a way this gun just this accuracy is so incredible when hit firing but the qbz is a kind of a confusing weapon to me one of the most I guess you could say different things about this gun is the attachment slots that you have open for and the amount of attachments you can put on this weapon. The QBZ, you cannot put a foregrip on this weapon, and that is a very big turnoff to this weapon for me. And the reason for that is this gun has got very heavy side-to-side -side recoil. It's not as heavy as some other weapons like an A91, but it is definitely high when it comes to the recoil category on the side-to-side. -side. The vertical recoil is not nearly as bad. It is very controllable. However, side-to-side -side recoil is pretty bad and, in my opinion, definitely warrants a foregrip. But you cannot put one on this weapon, and that for me is a little bit surprising. Until you actually shoot this weapon and watch whatever it reloads. Like right as I shoot this guy, watch it reload right there. You can see there is really no slot for a foregrip. And if anything, it already looks like there's a mini foregrip attached on there. But that is one of the reasons for me why I think this weapon is not used a lot. Is because the recoil is so heavy side to side. But you can't put a foregrip on there to reduce that. So... That, for me, is a big turnoff to this weapon and why I don't really like to run this weapon and why I don't think many people do either. Now, another thing with the QBZ is it's kind of slow reload time. If you still have a bullet chamber, the weapon will load, reload excuse me, in 2.5 seconds, but if your magazine is completely dry, that will take 3.1 seconds. That is pretty slow when it comes to other weapons in the engineer class, except for guns like a G53, in which it's pretty similar to. But comparing it to an M4A1, which takes 1.9 with the bullet chambered and 2.6 with the magazine empty, that is pretty slow, and oftentimes that is the difference in getting a kill or getting killed. So that is another reason why I think people don't normally like to run this weapon, is just its slow reload time. And this weapon is very similar to an AKS-74U, but on the AKS, you can put a foregrip on there. The side-to-side -side recoil is a little high. It's not nearly as bad, I think, as this weapon. But it is a little bit high. You can put it on there if you're going to go for more closer range fights. But an AKS, for me, is very diverse. You can take it into medium to almost close range. And you can basically take that foregrip off if you want to. And extend it out to long range if you attach something like a heavy barrel on there. The QBZ, for me, is kind of limited to a medium long range. You can take it in close quarters if you really enjoy hip firing. However, I really wouldn't stick to just hit firing with this weapon because, you know, the hit fire accuracy is good, but that sway, especially when you're moving side to side, is going to be very heavy and make it difficult to control. But the weapon is still pretty good when it comes to close quarters fighting. Once again, I wouldn't really recommend it. I'd stick to more medium to long range maps, such as Karg Island here, um, Operation Firestorm, Gulf of Oman are very good maps to run the QBZ on. My favorite setup for the QBZ would have to be... The laser sight and heavy barrel in the final two slots, as far as the scope goes, it's really a preference. I have used a lot of scopes. I've used the Cobra Red Dot sight. I've used the 
PKA Russian holographic sight. I've used the Reflex Red Dot sight from the USI and the US holographic scope. And honestly, my favorite is probably the Russian holographic. I just find that works a little bit better. It fits the recoil pattern when actually when looking at the scope itself for me. I really enjoy using it. It gives me a little bit longer zoom than a Cobra sight when it comes to more open maps and allows me to get more kills because the QBZ is relatively accurate. Actually, it is very accurate. It's one of the most accurate engineer guns in the game. But once again, you need to if you want to run this gun, you really learn how to control that side to side recoil. And once again, guys, I think the side-to-side -side recoil is the reason why people don't run this gun. The slow reload time is a reason, but I think overall, the side-to-side -side recoil is the overall verdict when it comes to people not earning this weapon. So once again, guys, I hope you all enjoyed this video. The QBZ is really underused, and the reason for that being is the recoil, and it's hard to control because you cannot put a foregrip on there. And also the slow reload time and its similarity to the AKS 74U and really the 74U outperforming it in a lot of categories. So that's why I think this weapon is so underused. But it is a weapon that is rather interesting and can be used effectively when hit firing and medium to long range engagement. So if you're curious about this gun, those are the two areas I would encourage you to try it out in. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you'd like me to continue this series, you can drop me a comment with a weapon you'd like to choose. And if you see someone else that already left a comment with a weapon you'd like to see, go ahead and thumbs it up. That way I'll know that you guys want to see, this, uh, see me continue this series. So y'all have a great day and I'll talk to you later.